Vay tane. Amen. Well, it's good to see y'all here tonight. If you would take your Bibles or not, we're going to be looking in two different places here. If you would take your Bibles open to the book of Mark, chapter number 13. I'm going to read a few verses there. And also, if you want to find your place in the book of John, chapter number 13. Uh, we'll be looking there at a few verses, but uh, it's a. Uh, I thank God for the opportunity to be here. I'll be honest with you; I'm very nervous. Uh, it's been a while since I preached. I've had some things going in my life, and I stepped down there for a little while, and uh, and then I got things right with the Lord. And I tell you, I thank the Lord for letting me be able to preach. And you know, I've never done nothing to dishonor myself, to disqualify myself from preaching, but. Uh, Hey man, I tell you, sometimes you go through things in life and uh, the devil can deceive you and, uh, and, and get you in a place in your life where you, uh, he can make you doubt your salvation and doubt things about your Christian life. But uh, if you would take your Bibles tonight and open to the book of uh, Mark first, and uh, if you would stand for the reference of the reading of the Word of God, and uh, we'll read here in verse number, we'll start a reading in verses number 17 here of chapter number uh, 14. It says here, and the evening one cometh with the twelve, and they said and did eat, eat, eat. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And look at this verse right here, and it says here, and they began to be sorrowful, and saying unto him, uh, unto him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is the one one of the twelve. That dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written unto him, and woe unto him, this that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It'd be good were if that man had not never been born. If you would take your Bibles also and turn over to the book of John here. And we'll read here in John chapter number 13. It says, starting in verse number 21, it says, When Jesus had thus said, he said he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And the disciples looked one at another, doubting whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. And Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who should it be and whom he spake. He said, lying, then lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, answered, it is the one whom shall give, I shall give the sop when I have, get, have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas the scare, the son of Simon. And after he, the sop, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus said unto him, that thou doest do it quickly. Now no man at the table knew for the t intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto, said unto him, buy those things that we need against the, the feast, or that we should give it to, something to the poor. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity it is to come and preach tonight, dear God. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you're just touching the service in a mighty way tonight, Lord. And Lord, I pray for liberty in the house of God tonight, Lord. Lord, that you just touch, Lord. And Lord, give us what we need tonight, Lord, not what we want, dear God. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you just touch and liberate tonight, dear God, and have your will in your way, Lord. And Lord, if there's someone lost here tonight, Lord, we pray that you save them, Lord. If, Lord, if there's someone here tonight that's backslidden, Lord, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll just touch them, Lord, and Lord, convict them and bring them back into the house of God, and Lord, put them back in the fellowship with you, dear God, and Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll just move in a mighty way on the service here tonight, Lord. Lord, touch tonight, Lord. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, Lord, that you'll just give us liberty here in the house of God tonight, Lord. Lord, help us to decrease so you can increase, dear God, and Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll just, Lord, touch the congregation tonight, Lord. And Lord, just give them receptacle ears to the word of God, Lord. Lord, that it'll sink down into their ears, Lord, that they hear the word of God. And Lord, not look at the messenger here tonight, Lord. Lord, but get their eyes upon you tonight, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you be in every 
thing that's said and done in the service tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. If you look here in these scriptures, uh, my main thought here I will take out of uh, chapter number uh, uh, Mark chapter number 13, where it says, And they began to be sorrowful, and say unto him, one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? Amen. My thought here tonight is, Is it I? Amen. I read this scripture a few years ago, and amen, I tell you, the Lord began to convict me in my heart, and amen, it helped me to realize that, amen, a lot of things in my life that was going wrong, amen, I'd been blaming and looking and uh, looking for answers and blaming it on somebody else, and amen, and I went to a camp meeting, and amen, and I noticed uh, two or three years ago, amen, you went to that meeting, I tell you, it was, it was packed out, and Amen, I tell you, God would really move in the services, and he's still moving in the services there. Amen, but the numbers in the, there it went way down. And, amen, and I got to think, I said, well, why did numbers go down in that, in, in that meeting? And, amen, and why is people not on fire like they used to be? And, amen, I tell you, amen, why ain't they a spark of God like we've seen in the 90s? And, amen, and seeing God move. And, amen, and I got to thinking about it, and I read this scripture, and and, and, and I looked over there and, it, and we're talking about, Lord, is it I? Is it I? I mean, you look in that scripture. I mean, it goes more or less. It says every one of the disciples there, amen, more or less had to look and search their heart and ask their self, Lord, is it I? Amen, it's going to betray you. Is it I the one that's going to, amen, cause you to go through this death? And Amen, I tell you, and I begin to think about that in my heart. Amen, and ask myself, Lord, is it I the reason we can't see revival? I was asking myself, Lord, is it I? Amen. We don't have meetings like we used to. Lord, is it I that's keeping people from getting saved? Is it I? Amen. It's keeping the choir from moving. It. Amen. The Spirit of God moving on them. Amen. I can begin to ask my, myself all these questions. Lord, is it I? Amen. And I begin to think, and amen. Amen. And you think about this yourself. And, Amen. You think down through the years, if you've been in, amen, uh, serving God for a while now, amen, we've seen times where God has really moved. And, amen. Yeah. We've come to a place in, amen, in our spiritual lives, and, amen, where we see a lot of empathy around us anymore. Amen. People's not wanting to serve God. And, right. Amen. Go to the house of God. Amen. You look around us. Amen. Everywhere you see, amen, there's drug problems all around yeah. or alcoholism. And, amen. And you see all these things around us. And, amen. But I tell you, is there really a witness going out to reach these people? Right. Right. Amen. amen. And I asked, my, I asked you this question that, Lord, is it I? Amen. Amen. As we look at the scripture here in just a minute, amen, I'm going to look at three people over here in the book of John. Amen. When you read this scripture that it talks about three of his disciples here. Right. Amen. I tell you, but I tell you, every one of his disciples had to take, amen, and search their own heart out here. Right. Amen. And I'm telling you, these were people who had walked with Jesus. Right. Amen. amen. They had seen his miracles. Right. They had seen him raise the dead. They seen him help the sick. They seen him touch, uh, heal the leper. Right. They seen him done all these many things. But yet, here with their last meal with the Lord, Amen. Before his death, they have to search their hearts. Yeah. Right. They have to ask themselves this question: Lord, is it I? I ask you tonight, Amen. As we begin to look at these three people here in just a minute. And ask you to search your heart tonight and say, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Amen. That we're not uh, seeing revival in these days. Amen. I want you to ask your question. Lord, is it I? It's keeping my loved ones from getting saved. I want you to ask yourself these questions. Lord, is it I? That we're not seeing God move like we used to. Lord, is it my apathy? Amen. Is it my unconcern? Lord, is it my unbelief? Amen. I'm not here to beat nobody up tonight. I'm human just like everybody else. This is just as much for me, amen, as anybody in here. I tell you, and I ask you tonight to search your heart and ask yourself this question Lord, is it I? You know, you look in the word sin, right in the middle of sin, the, the, the word I is. I tell you, amen, and, and, and you look in the middle of sin, you see that word I. I tell you, we all have sin in our life. But it's up to I if we repent of that sin. Or if we keep that sin in our lives. 
I tell you, we can serve a faith just God that's able to forgive us of that sin. But we've got to be able to repent of that sin and ask Christ for forgiveness of that sin and ask Christ to work in our lives. and Amen. Ask Christ to take that sin out of our lives and ask Christ to forgive us of that sin because he paid that price on Calvary's cross. But as we look at these three people tonight, in this scripture I just read, we see here, that Simon and Peter beckoned to see a Lord, and asked a Lord who this man was, which one of the disciples is going to betray him. Right. Amen. But you see, amen, if you think, if you look at Peter, amen, he is one of the boothless one of uh, the disciples. Right. He had a lot of pride in his heart. He had a lot of pride. Amen. He had a lot of dignity about himself. Amen. He had, I mean, he is very boastful. He's always that one. That would take him, amen. Amen. When something would happen, he'd be on the front line. Right. Amen. He'd be up there with his chest popped out, ready to fight. Right. Amen. He, he is the one. Amen. And I tell you, they man that, that, that said he'd never leave the Lord or forsake him. Right. But I just want to look at Peter for just a minute. As I said, he is the one that was prideful. Right. Amen. But he had to look at his heart, he had to take and search his heart. Amen. And, and, and see, amen, where his walk was with the Lord. Amen. amen. And, he, and, and you go on down and you read this scripture here. And it, it talks about, amen, Peter down here. I believe it's in verse number 37. It's Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot thou follow thee? I will lie down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered and said, Whither thou lay down my life for my sake, verily I say unto thee, the crocs shall crow not Till thou shalt deny me th thrice. We see here, this is the one. Amen. Amen. It was probably eight hours earlier. Amen. At, the at, at, at our Lord and Savior as they was crucifying. Amen. And more or less said he had never denied the Lord. Right. Amen. But as they took our Lord and Savior, amen, to take him and scourge him and whip him and amen, and take him before Pilate, amen, and through, through the high courts and Amen, I tell you, amen, Peter denied it. Amen, and Peter uh, followed afar off. Amen, he didn't follow a close. Amen, he walked at a distance from his Lord and Savior right here. Amen, he, he walked a distance. Amen, I tell you, amen, but this is a man that said that a, few, a, little while, a little bit before he had fallen to the ends of the earth. Amen, he had fought for him. But yet, at this time in his life, he denied Christ. Also, we see here, amen, Peter was also the one, amen, that walked on water out to Jesus out there on the sea. Amen, if you think, amen, God had enough trust in him, and, amen, and it told him to walk out on that sea to him. Amen, and Peter walked out on that water. Amen, but I tell you, Peter, amen, at a time in his life there, amen, he also looked down at that water, and, amen, began to be scared and began to start sinking, and, amen, sinking down into that water. And, amen, and, and he called up to the Lord and said, Lord, help! And the Lord picked him back up. I tell you, but this is a man full of pride. Also, we see here, he's a man that cut off the soldier's ear in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. I tell you, at a time when they come to take our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, he, is, he, he had enough guts to stand up. Amen. And he cut that soldier's ear off. Right. Amen. But the Lord told him no. And amen. We know the story there where he healed that, that soldier's ear and put that soldier's ear back on. Amen. I tell you, but amen. But he uh, he, he he done all these things. Right. Yeah. But yet he had to search his heart. Amen. amen. That's the same thing in our Christian life. Right. Amen. Amen. We have to follow the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We come to places in our lives. Amen. Where we, amen, begin to fall in sin. Amen. We're just like Peter here. Amen. We fall in sin. Right. Amen. We mess up. Amen. We make mistakes in our lives. Right. But we ought to be big, be big enough to realize that I got in the way. Right. That's what we see here with Peter. Uh, 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 he, he got in the way here. Also, I said he, we seen that he denied Christ. Yes, sir. Also, we see here, amen, he's also that disciple. Amen. After Jesus had come to him here in the book of John, and, Amen. And behind, after the four gospels, and Amen, that he that he that he came to him, and Amen. And after he told him, gave him the great commission to go out and preach it to all the world. Amen. amen. I, you should look in the last chapter of John. Amen. You see that. Amen. He was the one that said, "I'm going fishing." Right. Yeah. He's the one that was discouraged. Yeah, right. 
Right. He's the one that is downhearted. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, and instead of going and preaching the gospel like Jesus had told him here, amen, as he's descended up into heaven, amen, he, he went back to his old livelihood. Right. He went out there and they fished all night. Amen. Not only did he go, but he took the other disciples with him. Right. Amen. Because of his, amen, unbelief there. Amen. Because of his denying, because of him being defeated by the devil. Amen. He took other people with him. And they go out there on that sea and they pour all night and they fish and they fish. But yet they don't catch nothing. But yet the next morning they get, uh, they look and they see somebody on the sea there. Well, we see they see somebody on the sea there. Amen. And I tell you, there's another, another disciple in that boat. We'll go into him in just a few minutes. And he realized who that was. Amen. And he called out. He said, "That's Jesus." Amen. And we see here. Amen. That that he goes out there and amen. And we see Peter cast off his uh, his coat. Amen. And swim straight to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. We see here when they get on that seashore, amen, we see that uh, the Lord breaks bread with them and we see, amen, that he tells them to cast a net on the other side, amen, for the multitude of fish, amen, they could not, amen, pull that net in, they had to bring it to shore and drag it up on the, right. drag it up on land. But while they was eating there, he had to look it over at old Peter and he said, Peter, thou lovest thou me? Right. He said, Lord, thou knowest that I love. He said, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. He said that to him three times. He said, Lord, thou lovest thou me? He said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Amen. It, it took him for three times before he realized what, God, uh, what Jesus was trying to tell him there. Amen. He, it, it took him there. Amen. And he realized, amen, with that agape love, I think that's how you pronounce it. Amen. He's he seen that agape love that Jesus was talking about. Amen. And he's seen that love. and. Amen. And, and it restored him back into fellowship with the Lord here. Right. Amen. And, and he began to go on and preach the Word of God. Amen. And we know that Peter was the one that stood up on the day of Pentecost, filled with the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. He preached and over 3,000 got saved. Right. Amen. And you go on and you see that, amen, through his preaching, amen, he preaches again and over 5,000 get saved. Amen. And it says <clears throat> it was added to the church daily. We see here that Peter... Amen. He came to places in his life. Amen. Where, amen. He was away from God, but God still used him in a mighty way. Amen. I tell you, amen. He had to search his heart. Right. But a lot of times, the reason he got himself in trouble is from those, that little word, I. Amen. He always looked at himself instead of looking at the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. I tell you, I ask you tonight, Lord, is it I? I ask you this question, Lord, is it I? Also, we see here in this verse of Scripture, we see another. It says here, And now they're leaning on Jesus' bosom was one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned one unto him that he should ask who it should be and whom he spake of. Then he that laying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? Here we're talking about Brother John. Here we're talking about John, a, a, a man that well, you see here, it talks about him laying on Jesus' bosom. His heart was in tune with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. But we look here that John had to take and search his heart too. Amen. We see what he said here. He said, Lord, who is it? He had to look at himself. But he really he knew that it wasn't him because how much he loved the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And I tell you, amen, it could have been him very much that slipped up too. Right. Amen. But he had to ask this question, this question to himself. Lord, is it I that's going to betray you? Right. Is it I that's going to cause your death? But we see here, we see John the Beloved. Amen. And we see him. He, he's a man that walked close with God. Right. I tell you, and, and, and you might be that Christian here tonight that walks as close as God as you can. And, amen. And you love the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. But you still got to ask yourself, just like John, Lord, is it I? We see here, you look at John. Amen. As I said a while ago, this is the one that laid on uh, his bosom here. Amen. It, it don't call him by his name here. And, amen. But, but yet, 
And man, if you search the scripture, you know that we're talking about John here. Amen. Because he's always been the one that's close with the Lord and Savior Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. We see here that he that he is the one that was close to Jesus. He walked close to him. Also, we see here he's the one that Amen was entrusted with his mother. Amen. The Lord and Savior trusted John. Amen. He, 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 he thought so much of him, loved him so much. Amen. He, uh, he, when he was on the cross at Calvary, amen, when he looked down off that cross, he told him to uh, hold his mom. Amen. To take care of his mom. Amen. To help him take care of his mom, even though he's going on to heaven to be with the Father. Amen. Going down in the core of earth to take keys of death, hell, and grace for me and you. But he put old John to take care of his mother and watch over his mother. And, amen. Protect his mother and Amen. And look after his family because he had that much trust in him. But we see here, John's a man that was close to God. We see a man that was uh, that God trusted and he trusted in God. Also, we see that, you know, that he did he followed Christ yes, at a close distance. Right. Not a far off. Right. He's always the one that was always close to him. Always. Amen. He is never a far off. He, he knowed Christ. He knowed his heart. Amen. And he done everything he could in his power. Amen. To be right there with Christ and everything that he done in his ministry. Right. Amen. He, he is the one that, 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 that would follow him in his footsteps. Also, we know that John was the one that wrote the book of Revelations. Right. Amen. God, when he's over on the Isle of Patmos, as he's, when he's sent over there and imprisoned over there, amen, God gave him the book of Revelations and Amen. Gave him the book of first, the second, and third John. Amen. And he wrote all these books. Amen. He walked in and he's in tune with God. Amen. Also, we see here, he is the first one to be at Jesus' side. And everything he done. Like I said, a while I mentioned a while ago. Amen. When, uh, when he was on that cross, where was John? As Peter was falling afar off and amen, hiding and pouting and scared for his life. We see John, the beloved, there at Calvary's cross with Jesus' mother, amen, uh, encouraging her, amen, staying at the feet of Jesus. Amen. First thing, the thing we need to do in our Christian walk is be like John here and stay at the feet of Jesus. Right. Right. Amen, amen, right. stay at the foot of the cross at Calvary. Amen. amen, we see here that, amen, John is the one that stayed close to him. Right. I asked yourself tonight, Lord, is it I? Even though I'm following Christ as close as I can, is it I that's keeping God from moving? Amen. I, I, I give you a little thought here with my first pastor that uh, I'll never forget. Lots of times he said, you know, one person can have a key to a service. One person can have a key to that service. Amen. You might be back there quenching in uh, the Spirit of God. Amen. When God's telling you to testify or uh, man, telling you to witness the or telling you to do something, amen, amen, and you quench the Holy Spirit of God. Right. Amen. I, you, mean, you might come into church and you might be that one person, amen, that's come in mad, bitter at the world, and, amen, and got sin written all over you. Amen, I tell you, and it quenches the Spirit of God. You're right. But I tell you, amen, when we all get in harmony with God, and, amen, we all, amen, begin to, amen, uh, and put our trust and faith in Him, and, amen, uh, and let God guide us and direct us, amen, I tell you, we can see God do great and mighty things. Amen. Then the last person I want to look at here is Judas Iscariot. We see here, he talks, Jesus talks to him about the one that dipped his, and he's saying the one he dipped in the sob with. It, it, we see here that Judas was a man that walked with Christ afar off. Yeah. Here we see a man that had, well, had been walking with Christ his whole ministry, his three and a half years of his ministry. But yet, amen, instead of being like John, just like I just mentioned a while ago, was following God and close and, amen, was in tune with his heart with Christ. Amen, we see Judas here. Amen, he, he, he walked with Christ for these three and a half years. Amen, but he didn't have nothing within his heart. Amen, all, all he knew, amen, he's seen all the different things that Christ had done. But yet, he was not in tune with Christ. Right. Amen, he, he, he is walking within himself. Right. Also, we see he... Here he was the man. He he also was the man that carried the money. Right. He took care of the finances. Right. Lots of times I believe that you know they say money the root is the root of all evil. Right. 
And I, I think a lot of times, amen, we see here and, and you look at his life here, you see Judas. And I'm not saying, you know, don't take this wrong if you're the treasurer of this church. Amen, I don't take this wrong by no means. But I tell you, amen, I tell you, lots of times we can get money in front of us. and Amen, and let it take and get a hold of our lives. Amen, and it can cause us to separate us from the love of God. Amen, we can, t- uh, more or less what I'm trying to say is, amen, you can put your career ahead of God. And, amen, and making a good living and, Amen. And, and many other things you can put in front of God. And, amen. And you begin to miss the house of God. And, amen. And I tell you, you try to put uh, your finances and everything before God. And the next thing you know, you're out of the will of God and you're out of the house of God. Right. I tell you, don't let that money, don't let the, that, that take and destroy you. Right. Also, we see here, he was over the money. Also, we see here, like I mentioned a while ago, he's seen the different miracles that Christ had performed. As I've mentioned earlier. Amen. He's seen how he took and healed the blind. Right. How he touched the death. And amen. How he healed the uh, raised the dead and how he touched Lazarus. And amen. And he's seen all these many miracles that Christ had done. Amen. But yet he followed Christ afar off. Amen. Yet he hadn't accepted Christ as his Savior. Right. Yet he'd asked that Christ to come into his heart and amen. Save him and birth him into the family of God. Amen. Amen. Even though, amen, he'd seen God do all these things, he's still empty within. I tell you, amen, I tell you, I remember before I got saved, I tell you, I I, I look back and, amen, and the things of this world, I tell you, I was always depressed, downhearted, amen, always mad at everything, always depressed, amen, I didn't want to, you know, just mad at the world. But I tell you, when Christ coming into my life, I'll never forget that night when I asked him to come into my life. It felt like a big weight was lifted off of my shoulders. Amen. And, and, and he came into my heart. And he saved me. And amen. Things in my life that I didn't see wrong with before, I began to see. Amen. I needed to change those things in my life and begin to clean my life up. And right. Amen. And I tell you, that's what the Lord will do. Amen. But we see here, amen, Judas didn't have no fruit. Right. Yeah. He just Everybody. walked. He followed afar off. We see here that he served two masters. Right. He served this world and the devil, and he's trying to serve the Lord at the same time. Amen. I tell you, there's a lot of us that tries to do that. Right. Amen. Like I was saying a while ago, Amen. We try to go out here, we try to make a good living and support our family, and Amen. And we want to go on with our career, or whatever it may be, and Amen. And we got big hopes, to make big money, and. Amen. And we want to have a big fancy car. We want to have a big fancy house. And amen. We want to have all these other things. And amen. And we begin to work for those things. And amen. We begin to slip away from serving God. And amen. And we begin to go after these things. And the next thing you know, we're out of the will of God. Right. You can't serve two masters. You'll love one and you hate the other. Amen. You can't serve two masters. Amen. And that's what Judas is trying to do. He chose the wrong master. Right. Amen. He chose to go after the things of money. Amen. He chose to betray our Lord and Savior for 30 pieces of silver. Right. He's looking at material things. He wasn't looking at heavenly things. He wasn't looking at eternal life. Amen. He wasn't looking, amen, for that new home and that new fellowship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was looking what he could get out of the world today. Right. He is looking at what, 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 what he could get out of the world. But he betrayed him with a kiss. I tell you, how many times do we betray our Lord with a kiss? And we slap him in the face. Oh Lord, help us tonight. Just to see how easy it is to let other things creep into our life. Amen. To keep us from serving God. You're right. I think here about Adam. And Eve in the garden. That serpent tucking it, amen, and it, it beguiled Eve, and amen, she took of that forbidden fruit, and she took and she ate of that. Amen, and she took and amen, that, that serpent took and de- deceived her, amen, and showed her everything that was good and pleasant to the eye, good to look at, and amen, the many things, amen, and she took of that forbidden fruit. Amen. But then we see Adam, amen, he took and he took of that forbidden fruit too. Amen. He, he let sin creep into his life. Amen. He, he, he let that temptation of that fruit and that lust 
take into the appetizers of eating that, uh, eating that fruit. Right. I tell you, that's the same thing in our lives. If we don't wash, we'll let the lust and the pride of life, amen, and, and, and what we see with our eyes draw us to things, and it, it will separate us from God just like it did. Amen, it separated Adam and Eve in the garden from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I mean, from, from God here in the garden. Amen, because there is one rule in that garden. And that was not to eat of that forbidden fruit, that tree of life. Amen. But they decided to eat from that tree of life and of knowledge instead of serving and following after God's will. Amen. I tell you, that's the same thing in our Christian lives. Amen. We see here, amen, that that will happen to us if we don't follow after God. You're right. I asked you tonight, Lord, is it I? Amen. That's good. Is it I? It's not serving the Lord uh, the way I sp I'm supposed to. If I let things creep into my life, Amen. I want to ask you tonight, Amen. Or, or just uh, just like these three uh, disciples we looked at, Peter, John, and Judas. We seen one that was prideful. We seen one that loved, and we seen one that deceived, that died, and went straight to hell. Right. I tell you, I want to ask you tonight, amen, in your heart, amen, as you search your heart, Lord, is it I? Lord, am I uh, looking at these three? Am I one of these? Am I following Christ afar off? But Lord, I need to search my heart and ask myself, Lord, is it I? Right. Or are you like Peter, amen, that's got pride in your heart and you've made mistakes in your life and you're going to make the mistakes right now, amen, and you need to get those things right with God. Ask yourself, Lord, is it I? Or are you just like we see here about Judas, a man that walked with Christ, but never don't have no fruit, that's never been saved? You now the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I tell you, he paid it all on Calvary's cross so we could have eternal life. Right. I tell you, we, that's where our hope is. It's in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not in this flesh. It's not in what we can get all the wealth of this world. Amen. I, 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 man, Preston and Caden, we like to fool these beagles a lot. But I tell you, we can't take those things to heaven with us. Right. Amen. We can't let those things get in front of us. Amen. That keeps us out of the house of God. And, amen. Let those things get in our hearts. And amen. Amen. And let that, amen, winning that championship or whatever it may be. Amen. Let that take us out of the house of God. Right. I tell you, amen. I tell you, those things, amen. You, I can look back. Amen. I know y'all. a lot of y'all don't know about these rabbit dogs stuff I'm talking about. Amen. But I know a friend of mine, he's had three or four field champions. After five or six years, guess what? They're going to die. Right. What are you going to have? Nothing. Amen. But when you got Christ, Amen. you got Amen. eternal life. Amen. When you go after the things of this world, Amen, I tell you that, Amen, you can have the finest house in the world. Amen, you can have the finest car and drive the nicest vehicle in the world. Amen, but I tell you, if you ain't got Christ, let me tell you, that old truck, Amen, that thing sooner or later, it's going to be covered up with rust. Right. Amen, it's going to, uh, you're going to drive it so long, it's going to burn all. Amen, that thing's going to wear out. But I tell you, when you got Christ, you got eternal life. Amen. I tell you, Amen, the things we have in this world are temporal. But we got a Savior that paid it all on Calvary's cross for our sins. Now I ask you tonight, Lord, is it I that's keeping people from getting saved? Lord, is it I that's going after this world and not after you, Lord? Lord, is it I that's seeking after, amen, fleshly temptation instead of serving, uh, going after you? Ask yourself tonight, Lord, is it I, amen, that's, Letting different things come into my life that's happened in my life that's keeping me from serving you. And I got bitterness in my heart towards somebody else. Amen. Lord, is it I that's seeing the revival not come to the house of God? Is it I seeing, that is not seeing a revival come to Asheville? Amen. Come to the Weaverville here. Amen. Am I the one that's not the reason we can't have revival in Western North Carolina? Ask yourself tonight, Lord, is it I? Amen. That's the reason we're, this world's in the shape that it's in today. I know that's a big statement by saying that. But I tell you, if we all do our part, I tell you, it ain't such a big statement. Right. If we all follow after the will of God. I tell you, I think that's one thing that's happened to our country. We've, we've let so many people come in of these leftists and everything. Amen. And, and they've, 
amen, beat us down so much lots of times, amen, and, and we begin to just let them do as they please. But sometimes, church, we got to stand up for what's right and right. serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask tonight, Lord, is it I? Amen. I'm getting ready to turn it over to you, brother. But I tell you, I thank God for the opportunity. I ask tonight, Lord, is it I? Am I the reason that we're not seeing something, God do something great in this right. country? Thank you very much. I do appreciate the good, good preaching tonight. Thank you.